Being able to recognize any PLL case by looking at only two sides is a very beneficial skill to have. It will decrease your recognition time and it will decrease the amount of unnecessary AUFs you have to do before you realize what case you have. And one thing you really shouldn't do during PLL recognition is this or this. So besides the very obvious reasons why you might want to learn this, um, here's another reason why two-side recognition is good. So this is a G perm, but it might be hard to tell even by looking at the front three sides, let alone only two sides. So if you're looking at this side, you might do a UAUF and then do another one, and there's the block, and you recognized it by now. So you start your algorithm. This is one of the standards, and I'm not going to finish it. I hope you know the rest of it. And then after you finish it, you'll do another U2AUF, which is unnecessary because one of the standards, if you know it, uh, starts like this. I'm not going to do the rest of it. And so that means you did not have to do the AUFs at the very beginning, which means you don't have to do them at the very end either, because this is no AUFs for one of the standard algs. But if you can't recognize it from this angle, then there's really not much of a point in knowing that alg. So by knowing two-side PLL recognition, you can actually use your algorithms from multiple angles on cases that are hard to recognize from multiple angles. So if you see a checker pattern of five in a row, as in red, blue, red, blue, red, and the only thing not part of the checker pattern is that last corner, then what you have is an R perm. So if the headlights are here and there's no block here, then there must be a block here. Now, if you see the checker pattern is only four stickers, one, two, three, four, red, blue, red, blue, then these two are junk, and this will be a G perm with a block back here. If you can do two-side PLL recognition, then you can do a little bit more optimization on your AUFs before you do PLL. This is a little bit more advanced, but let me show you what I mean. This is a G perm, and uh, there's a blog over here. So if you recognize it from this side, you see it's a G perm, and what you want to do is if you have the two algs that I mentioned earlier and you want to know should you do a U AUF and then do this or should you do a U prime AUF and then do this. So ignoring the fact that a U AUF sets this on top of the red, like if we, if we weren't looking here and we just wanted to figure out what's the most optimal way to start this PLL, then what you want to do actually is a U prime AUF. The reason for that is you're going to need to regrip your hand up here for your right hand and you don't want to have to do a U-turn before you regrip. So you can regrip as you do the U prime, and you can start the alg right away. And similarly, if your G perm started out over here, if you do a U AUF and then start this alg, it is just slightly, ever so slightly slower than doing U prime and then starting this alg, assuming you can do both algs at the same speed. If one alg is faster than the other, then of course give preference to the faster alg. But two-side recognition is hard if you get all junk, like nothing really matches each other and you don't see any blocks. You don't want to look at every single sticker in this case. What you want to do is reduce the number of cases you can get by doing CP recognition during OLL. So during OLL, you should be able to find a way to tell whether your PLL will be a no swap for corners, adjacent swap, or a diagonal swap. And here's why. So if you see headlights here or headlights here, as in these, uh, these stickers match or these stickers match, then it is an adjacent swap. But if you don't, that means it's in one of these two positions, and instead you'll see that these two outer corner stickers will match. And that is one thing you'll have to check for if you do two-side PLL recognition on this. But if you knew that it would be a diagonal swap, you can completely skip that step and instead just look for important matching stickers. So Right now you see no matching stickers, but an N perm would always have matching stickers. So of the four diagonal swap PLLs, you can reduce N perm out of it. Now what you want to look for is these two stickers matching or these two stickers matching. And uh, in this case, so uh, at least one of those pairs do match, so it will not be a V perm. But if both of the pairs didn't match, then it would be a V perm. Now you're left with Y perm and E perm. And if you take these two stickers that match and you go in between them and they do match, then it will be an EPERM. Additionally, you can look for that these two match. So um, here's a Y perm. These two are red and these two are green. So there's two matching pairs of these and it's a Y perm. So however you choose to recognize it, but basically what I'm saying is that by recognizing your corner swap during OLL, then once you get to PLL, you can cut your recognition time by a lot. But that was the worst case you could get. So again, we have diagonal PLL and um, if you only see one block here, then it has to be a Y perm. And if you see a full block here, obviously it's a V perm. If you see two blocks, it's an N perm. And if you see a block here on the side only, no block here, then it has to be a V perm. 
and two blocks is obviously a Y perm. So the reason why you can so easily reduce the number of cases for diagonal swap PLLs is because there are only four cases. And so therefore there will be more distinct things about them. But for adjacent swap PLLs, it is a little bit harder. And in order to reduce it, that is actually very advanced. And I will talk about that in a different video. Now, when all the corners are solved, it is very easy from most angles to recognize what EPLL you have. But if you want to learn how to recognize it, then I do talk about that in my video, Why You Should Learn COLL. If you really want to go see it, it will be in the description. In order to learn all of the cases, one way you could do it is by trying to set up every single case or just by looking in your solves and trying to figure out uh, what case you have without doing AUFs. Also in the description, I will post a link to the resource I use to help me learn this. Uh, it has lists of all the different cases, so you can refer to them quickly rather than have to uh, recall each of them if you try to learn them by yourself. Some people say that they can recognize PLL from any two sides and they gained the ability just from doing solves over and over and seeing the PLLs many, many times from all the different angles. Now, I've seen them from multiple angles many, many times, but I have not been able to do that. So if you are one of the people who can do that just from experience, then you are lucky because there are people who can't do that. And so for some people, maybe the skill seems a little bit obvious, but then at least for me, I had to actually go out and learn it. So I will be referencing uh, two-side PLL recognition in some of my other videos when I talk about different techniques. Some of them require two-side PLL recognition, and some of them are just not as good without it. So uh, it will be a very important skill, not just for the obvious reasons. So that will be all for this video, and I will see you next time.